Hello folks, today is Friday, July 29th, 2016. My name is Jake Baldino, the official nominee for president of Game Ranks, and we gotta talk about some news stuff that happened this week in gaming. Starting off with Life is Strange getting a television show. Yes, Square Enix and Legendary Entertainment of all people have apparently partnered up and announced that they are working on a digital series for Life is Strange. Digital series meaning it is a TV show that's probably gonna pop up on something like Netflix or Amazon. Uh, hopefully not just Crackle, because that wouldn't be bad. According to the people involved and the connected people from Don't Not Entertainment, uh, these are apparently very early in the planning stages of an actual show, so there's not really any definitive word yet on whether or not it's going to be the exact same character. Apparently, it's definitely going to take place in Arcadia Bay, but other than that, it seems like there's a big shrug because they're still trying to come up with the actual story and whether or not it's going to be different narratives or a singular narrative or whatever. But that's still really exciting because Life is Strange was awesome. And something that has got me pretty excited and intrigued is the first rumors of really of a next generation console this one being the Nintendo NX there's been rumors floating around with this thing forever but it seems like Eurogamer has picked up one of the most prominent and believable sources yet of course it's all unnamed sources and stuff like that but the rumors here are kind of tangible because things have been kind of leading up to it in some ways, so it makes sense. So basically, here is the gist. Apparently, the Nintendo NX is going to be a portable console. It will be powerful enough to play real games, but you can bring it around with you, and it also has detachable controllers on the side. And then you can bring this handheld portable console thing home with you, plug it into a base station at your TV, and then play it like a traditional console game. All the other rumors are coming together with the fact that it will be cartridge-based. Apparently, that is a thing. And as much as that's just kind of a novelty, I'm into it. It's fun. Apparently these cartridges, uh, you know, are 32 gigabyte in size, which leads a lot of people to believe like, oh wow, that's not really amazing in terms of the size of games these days. But, you know, Nintendo has never really cared about that type of stuff. Another part of this rumor was the information that it was powered by NVIDIA, not AMD, and this is the NVIDIA Tegra processor, which for those of you that don't follow that stuff, isn't the most beefy chip in the world, but it can, you know, play games. Again, like I said, Nintendo's never really been concerned about raw graphical power. And I'm not like defending them or anything, I'm just saying. And another rumor pouring in is that this console portable hybrid thing is also going to be able to play the Nintendo mobile games. And ultimately, this is a big point for discussion. I know a lot of you guys are probably pretty disillusioned with Nintendo now. You don't really even give a shit anymore. You're done. Uh, but the way I look at it is that Nintendo is, is trying something different once again. They tried something different with the Wii U. It flopped, it failed, but they were on to something and they were trying something different because they saw an opportunity, okay? The Wii U was innovative in the fact that it had the game on the gamepad and you could turn off the TV or someone else could use the TV and you could walk away and continue to play your games. That was something that was kind of underutilized, but the fact that Nintendo thought of that and tried to go after that is very interesting. So now this new NX console seems to be them seeing the way the market is going with portables, with handhelds, with their success in handhelds, but also the mobile market in and of itself and how people like to take their games with them, while also at the same time catering to families and gamers who play games on their TV, and also kind of hearkening back to a thing that uses cartridges and people can collect and trade them and just physical media. But my point really is, is that they're trying something different, okay? It could be bad, it could fail, but at least they saw something and they're seeking it out and they're trying to come up with an answer for it. This isn't just the next Nintendo console, it has great graphics, it has a cool controller, and that's it. They're trying to do something different here, and I like that. I mean, they're trying something different by doing the thing they've been doing for, 12, for 15 years. Basically, <laughs> yeah. Years. yeah. Yeah, they are, but they're trying to like, you know, put it all together and it all makes sense. The Nintendo NX could be amazing or it could be the worst. <laughs> and something that came as a bit of a surprise to me was a re-release of Marvel Ultimate Alliance 1 and 2 for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Kind of awesome. I really, really love the original game. The second one was okay, but the first one is amazing. The spiritual successor basically to something as awesome as X-Men Legends, sign me up. And you know what? Sign me up once again. But apparently the PC version has been having a ton of issues from just being a poorly optimized bad port to controller issues. And I think that's really disappointing considering this is expensive, okay? You can buy one of the games for $40 or you can buy both of them for a combined $60. Regardless, that's really expensive for a 10 year old game. Personally, I haven't checked it out yet, but after hearing about issues with this and missing character DLCs and stuff, I think I'm going to hold off until one, it gets cheaper, and two, they smooth out some of the issues. But if you have been playing it, I do want to hear from you what you think about it down in the comments. And of course, since it is one of the biggest things in culture and the public mind right now, let's talk about Pokemon Go for a second. I'm going to keep it short because we're all starting to get sick of these stories, but this one is kind of interesting. For those of you that have been playing it, according to the Pokemon Go Reddit group, towns have been actively removing all Pokemon 
focus stops from main town areas such as town halls, main streets, and stuff like that. For those of you that don't know, you can file a report to the maker of the game Niantic in order to request more Pokestops or get one removed from a specific place. And it seems like towns are actively fighting against Pokemon Go, maybe to remove congestion from streets. I don't know what they're going for, but that kind of just fucking sucks. Why, why you gotta be like that? Why you gotta be a party pooper? And speaking of Pokemon Go, and especially if you're the type of person that's probably losing interest already, Niantic was at San Diego Comic-Con talking about the features that they are going to add to the game. Uh, trading is coming. They have a ton of features that never made it into the game, apparently, that they are working on. They're also hoping to add more next generation Pokemon to the roster. But honestly, they didn't really have any concrete information to give us because it still seems like they're pulling their hair out. They said that they're still just dedicated to keeping the servers up and running, and that's fine. But now that this game is such a huge success, I say make the team bigger and start cranking out features because goddamn, people are gonna get tired of this game quick because even casual players are plowing through this game. One thing I did pick up from this Comic-Con panel is that they said that there are still more Easter eggs in the game that people haven't discovered, such as the EV Evolution nickname trick. Apparently, there's more stuff like that that players haven't figured out. So that's fucking really cool. But speaking of really cool, if you guys have been paying attention to the new God of War, Corey Barlog, the lead director, has been talking more about the game and some of the features and stuff, and apparently the rage meter is gonna tie more into the narrative in terms of how much you fill up the rage meter and burn through it and use it to your advantage. If you're greedy with it, it's apparently going to uh, affect the story and, and Kratos is going to lose control. He said that this gameplay aspect isn't going to affect players in gameplay. It's not going to punish them, but it is going to affect the narrative, which is pretty damn interesting. It seems like they're trying a lot of really weird, different stuff for this God of War, and I'm all about it. That's like easily in my top 10, like anticipated. Boy, I want to call it Boy of War <laughs> or God of Boy. <laughs> And speaking of Comic-Con, if you are the type of person to get excited about people wearing capes, the Justice League trailer dropped. I think it's pretty interesting, uh, but the cool thing is, is that somebody recreated it in Fallout 4. And I usually don't go for these types of things, but this one, he did a good job. Good job. It's pretty funny. Now I want to talk about something very interesting, and I never thought this would ever come up again, but apparently a new Metal Gear Solid game has surfaced on Amazon accidentally listed. Uh, Metal Gear Solid Definitive Edition type of thing, which is leading people to go crazy with all kinds of rumors and speculation. Of course, this accidental listing was taken down immediately, but it did not stop people from going nuts thinking up all kinds of types of things. Okay, maybe it's just a definitive edition with uh, all the multiplayer DLC, and it also comes with Ground Zeroes all in one package, which is kind of lame. But on the flip side, what if it's a director's cut? Could, could you imagine, like, all that extra stuff that Hideo didn't include, that whole extra sequence with a young liquid snake in the jungle? That could be very interesting if that was all in the game. I feel weird about this because I'm like a diehard Metal Gear person, but this one was my least favorite one, and also with Konami by now, I'm just like, yeah, okay, guys, whatever, fucking stop. But I'd also probably buy this immediately because I have a Metal Gear collection I, of, like, everything Metal Gear. I try and own it. Does that make me a terrible person? I don't care. I'd say, if anything, you should put Metal Gear Solid 4 on PlayStation 4. That would be that would be real nice if you're going to do this whole thing. Uh, also, with all the Pachinko Machines uh, graphics of, of remodeled, remastered Metal Gear Solid 3, they put so much work into all those cutscenes. God damn, just make it a game. Or maybe they are. Ooh. Konami's community manager did a big Reddit AMA where the main takeaway here is that he said that Konami is sorry and they want to earn your trust back. <laughs> Couldn't finish that sentence without laughing. Speaking about Metal Gear Solid, he did tease little hints here and there, like we might hear something of a new Metal Gear announcement, probably for the next game that they're dragging along uh, with the 30th anniversary of the game, which would be next year. And he said on record, and I quote, Metal Gear is important to a lot of people here and has been stated publicly, will be supported in the future in a console market. It can be hard as fans. One day I hope we may earn you back and surprise you. Hope that helps and does not sting. <sighs> I go back and forth with that, because if apparently Konami wants to earn us back, they have to make games. I don't know. They have all these other things. We haven't seen a, a Castlevania game anytime soon. The Silent Hill. They canceled PT. It doesn't seem like they're really having any interest in the games market anymore, except for Metal Gear because it makes them money, which I don't know if I even want a new Metal Gear without Hideo Kojima. Am I going to play it? Probably, yeah. But do I really want it? I don't know. I'm 50-50 on that. Also, stop the presses. I don't know why the fuck. Okay, like every week I tweet out and I'm like, hey guys, what do you want me to talk about on Friday? And nobody brought up the new Sonic games. Come on, guys. So Sega has announced they are making two new Sonic games. The first one is a completely new a 3D Sonic game, which looks a lot like a new Sonic Generations, which comes with, oh boy, classic Sonic, new Sonic, 
Oh, and that really new shitty Sonic. The one that makes out with girls? The, no, the one that wears like fucking hand bandages for no oh. reason. But something that I thought was much more interesting was Sonic Mania, which is a return to form uh, reimagining of the original game with the original graphics and gameplay types with added features, new stuff with levels, and just kind of like a new old Sonic experience. And I'm kind of all about that, I'll, I'll be honest. I do want to hear from you guys what you think about that, but before we get to that, let's talk about the free game giveaway we do every single week. I know that's why you guys come here, okay? Every week there's a link below you click it you sign up once you're entered forever and then every single week I go in I close my eyes and randomly choose one winner to win a free game of their choice this week's winner is Yo, nice going. You want a game. I'm going to be getting in touch with you, so check your inbox over the weekend. And y'all know the drill by now. I don't really have much friends in real life, so if you want to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, all those places and talk about games, we should do that. Also, you can see I've been teasing. I managed to play a top secret game this week that I can't talk about yet, but it was really good. So let me know what you guys think about the stories we talked about this week. And number one, Konami. Do you give a shit? Do you still care? Or no? And if Life is Strange does become some sort of Netflix TV show, who do you think should play Maxime? And of course, we have to talk about this rumored Nintendo NX. If these rumors are true, how do you feel about it? I know a lot of you are probably gonna hate it, but I'm still interested to hear what y'all think. Cause it's just a very weird concept and very out there. And I think it's definitely a big topic for discussion. As always, thanks so much for watching the videos we make on Game Ranks and the Friday show every single week. I'm here, you guys know the deal. Clicking the like button helps us out a ton. I appreciate it a lot. And subscribing is a good idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me.